So good day, everyone. Today, we've got the legendary Ariel Goodman here to present for us the um, active transit Venus star point or VSP in short in the sign of Libra. We haven't had that since 1879 to 1880. I think that's when the last uh, time there's a Libra VSP in the sky. So how are you, Ariel? Yes. Thank you, Donnie. Nice to be here. Nice to see you again. Yes. It's momentous, right? This uh, first Libra VSP. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I have to say, Donnie, I've been seeing you pop up all over YouTube and various outlets in terms of um, really, really working with the VSP, the Venus star points, and um, the continuing flow of the star. Um, so thank you for that and your continued um, really interesting and brilliant insights into how the star points work in people's lives. Uh, I mean, after learning and becoming a certified uh, VSP practitioner, teacher, and coach, uh, I've been looking at things in a different light or from a different perspective, at least. Yeah. And uh, I'm always looking at the uh, active five star points in the sky yeah and how does that fit into the story of that person and why are those people on the news right now as we speak yeah yeah and, and that's an out that's a dimension of the chart that most astrologers don't look at we're mm -hmm. looking but we're usually we're used to looking at the active transits of uh, pluto saturn eclipses, yeah. nodes, whatever. And what's happening now with knowing that this Venus star clock is operating behind the zodiac mm -hmm. and it's pinpointing certain points in the chart around, <clears throat> then we can see, yeah, we, we're getting a deeper dimension of it. So I mean, that's what our discussion will be about today. <laughs> less, I, I mean, you call the Venus star point or VSP as like a cosmic heartbeat. Yeah, yeah. I like to call it the cosmic highlighter. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> it highlights certain parts of the chart and it really brings it out to the forefront. Get that and little yellow accompany. marker out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got yellow, got orange, you name it. So. Orange. <laughs> Green. Green. You know, all the five typical colors. Yes, one for each exactly. star point. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. So uh, do you have any um, slides regarding the uh, Libra star point that uh, yeah, you want to share? With I you? actually do. Um, let's see. Let's jump straight yeah. to it, shall we? <laughs> um, yeah, and so I just want people to know that um, we're going to only touch on a little tiny bit of the yeah. Venus star points today, but you can learn a lot more about it in either the ebook or the print book, um, which has the full story of how the star is made, how it comes about. Oh, there you go, Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Another happy reader. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you very much. But um, there has been an enormous amount of interest um, in this last month on the Venus star point. And a lot of it has to do with it changing into the sign of Libra for the first time in over 150 years. Yeah. Um, the way the star clock moves, it moves uh, Venus, the Venus star points, which are based, actually the star points or the Kazemis are based on the sun Venus conjunction. And they happen every nine months, but they happen every eight years. There's two full stars created, a full evening set and a full morning star set. Um, you don't have to know the mechanics of all of this to actually understand and appreciate what these points mean to you in your own chart. But the more you delve into it, the more you're going to see some uh, very deeper, a lot of deeper meaning. Um, and I can, I connect it to the heart. I, I call it the cosmic heartbeat because it is the sun Venus, which is actually from Earth's perspective, 
from the sun's perspective, it's that who is the center of the solar system. It's Earth and Venus connecting. It's Earth and Venus. It's the Earth-Venus dance going around the sun. And so it is a partnership. It's a pair. It's when they meet. I call it the kiss, the cosmic kiss, or the um, the the technical word is Kazemi. But what it means is when Venus or any planet is in the heart of the sun. And in this case, it's Venus in the heart of the sun. So just the idea of a planet being in the heart of the sun brings a kind of a light and energy and upliftment. Um, and because Venus is love and the, and the heart and the heart connection to Earth, I feel like it is a laser beam of light shooting through the heart of Venus to the Earth, the body, ourselves, before we were born, um, which is when we are, our cellular development was being created. So we look to the Venus star point just before we were born to see, okay, where do we fit on this star and how are we navigating through life from a heart-centered place. So that, in a kind of a nutshell, is what the Venus Star Point is all about. And there's an easy table to find out how you can get there too. But I think the main, um, the main uh, uh, point to make is, is that um, we are in a shifting, time zone right now, <laughs> literally, <laughs> all the time zones are shifting this week and a lot around the world, but um, we're in a shifting time period in terms of the whole world and the whole cultural uh, phenomenon of what, where we have been for the last hundred years. And I think this is an important point to mention. Um, the uh, because we haven't been to Libra, the Venus star hasn't been to Libra since the 17, well, the inception of the star was 1771, 251 years ago, 151 years, no, 251 years ago, that's a whole cycle, 251 years, um, is the fact that if you look at 1771, it ingressed into Libra at 29. It always comes in through the back door to the higher degree because it's moving clockwise around the zodiac away in the opposite direction that the planets are moving. But if you compare that to now, 1771 pretty much equals 2022. This is the first time in other words, now, since 1771, that we've had 29 Libra on the star. And then if you go four years later, we go back to Scorpio, the first degree of Scorpio, for the last Scorpio star point. And four years from now, we go back to Scorpio for the last Scorpio star point. 1779, four years after that, we are in Libra to stay. And now it's going to start moving through Libra sequentially 27, 28, and it's going to go back to 25, and for 100 years, go through Libra down to back down to zero. And so this happens in 2030, when we're in Libra to stay. Mm. And 2034, of course, is a continuation of Libra. But the idea being that we're in a giant transitional period, right now in the 2020s from the perspective of the Venus star. We're having our first Libra star point, and then we're having our last Scorpio star point, and then we're having Libra to stay. So it's sort of like when an outer planet moves through a sign on the cusp, you know, like Pluto will do next year. It'll dip into Aquarius, and then it'll come back to Capricorn again for a time. And, and so everybody's all excited about, oh, Pluto's going into Aquarius, but it's not quite finished with Capricorn yet. Not um, quite. Yeah. <laughs> and the really poignant 
uh, point about this is that Pluto is in the last degrees of cardinal signs going through the beginning of the fixed sign, Aquarius, at the same time that the Venus star point is in the last degrees of cardinal signs, 29 Libra, going back into zero, one degree Scorpio, fixed, early fixed signs. So Pluto and the Venus star right now are really tracking together in a square. Um, and what is Pluto? Pluto is about power. It's about control. It's about pushing and really pushing for, for things to change. And so there's a lot of, um, I, I've noticed through the years that when um, a sign phases out or uh, anything phases out really, when it's in its last period, when it's in its last months or years of the cycle, it's sort of making its last gasp like dying, it's last dying gasp, and it wants to come back to life in a very, very big way. But the power isn't there anymore for it to sustain itself. It really is dying out. I relate it to, have you ever seen, well, it can be in or outside of a glass, but a candle burning in a tall glass, when it comes down to the very last flicker, suddenly it gets really bright for just a moment, like, help me, I'm dying. And then it fades out again. And this is how I feel about Scorpio in terms of its cultural impact and influence in um, our world right now. It's got one last dying breath to take and Libra then will take over. But I think even immediately before we go back to the Scorpio point, we're getting a preview now, 2022 till 2026 will be more or less the preview of coming attractions or the trailer for uh, the Libra star point, you know, in general. Um, we're already seeing Libra, which deals with the courts and justice and the law and balance and fairness and so forth. I think we're already seeing a lot of court cases. Um, what's interesting about our time and the 1770s and 80s, of course, as we know, um, in the 1770s, the United States was created. And we are talking about the Pluto return now for the United States, which is definitely happening. And it couldn't be happening in a more, um, you know, aggressive way uh, in terms of um, people on both sides claiming they're fighting for democracy. But are, is this democracy that was created back then um, and now going through its return period, is it going to last or is it going to change or is it going to become something new? My feeling is all <laughs> kind of, uh, it's, it's changing, it's gonna become something new. And we well, have yeah. these years in the future to look to in terms of, because, you know, democracy is actually on trial right now as we speak, where we're still having the January 6th hearings of the attempt to overthrow um, the Capitol. Um, and <clears throat> it's, you know, there's both sides, you know, kind of really, uh, we're, we're not going together. We're not in a cooperative spirit yet. Libra wants cooperation and partnership and hey, you know, okay, I'll give you this. I'll, you know, it's a barter system in a, in a way, the fundamentals of Libra and the scales of balance, you know, what were scales used for in the um, way back when? And Libra is, um, you know, obviously um, uh, portrayed by a set of scales. Scales were used to weigh goods and like even now, 
you know, you, you go buy your fruits and vegetables at the market and somebody's always putting them on the scale to say, okay, how much, how much do they weigh and how much do you owe me? Yeah. You know, this is the exchange. Okay. So in politics and in partnership, in cor corporate dealings and everything, the spirit of Libra and the fair exchange um, will come back. It will come back. I think with Scorpio, it's been a more of a competitive kind of exchange. Okay, this really isn't a fair exchange. I'm going to charge a little bit more because I know I can get it um, or whatever. This is how it's been. So we're going to balance the scales. We're, eventually, we're going to balance the scales. And it's, and it's starting now. Start watching um, for small things to indicate that this is true. Do you reckon the social media landscape is going is undergoing a very huge revamp? Because um, I think it's recently on the news that the stock price of Facebook from the beginning of this year, it literally start tanking mm. all the way till now. And um, I basically looked at the um, chart of Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> okay. And... It's a good one to start with for Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't have his um, um, reliable birth time because that ain't any. But what's really interesting is that he's got Mercury at 29 degrees of Aries. <laughs> okay. Mercury. All right. Opposing zero degree Scorpio Pluto. Mm. So okay, so he's right in that right now. He's, he's right in that, that right now. Yeah. Well, you know, he changed this year to Meta, right? Right. This book became Meta. Um, yeah. So yeah, there are big changes on the landscape for him. But um, I think the reason that if you're saying that the stock prices of Facebook have taken a nosedive. Mm. I think it's because people are not getting from Facebook what they really want anymore. Yeah. It's it's become um, a kind of a ferocious platform for people to be on. And a lot of people well, that I know personally have said, I just don't use Facebook anymore. Yeah. Um, because it's not a, a it's not a um, harmonious or pleasant place to be for the most part now we as astrologers use that platform i do yeah. um, to announce certain things and of course i'm on the other side of the world right now so to connect with family and friends it's a, it's a good thing to do but i have to say i i can't really make too much in the way of astrological statements anymore Right. on any of these social media platforms because immediately somebody's going to come back and just slam you with, you know, oh, well, you didn't say this or you should have said that or why did you say this? And it's sort of like, well, okay, um, why don't you go to somebody else's channel or page if you want to hear that because that's not what I'm going to say. <laughs> or... You, the, um, or the post gets reported and it gets taken down. Yeah. Something yeah, like that. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's really interesting pertaining to this particular VSP at 29 Libra is that I think in April there's a hybrid solar eclipse at 29 degrees of Aries. <laughs> I know. I know. I noticed that. Yeah. So probably I, I would think that April to May, the eclipse time frame. Yeah. The... Um, this Venus star point at 29 Libra that we are having is going to be really activated. Um, yes. I've and also it's looked... matching this eclipse series right now. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, if I recall, uh, I think in May, uh, transit Mars will be at 29 Cancer. <laughs> yes. I think there's a, a huge cardinal square. Now that's going to be an interesting thing. I have another slide okay. here. It has to do with, um, here it is. Talk about the cardinal. 
presence yeah. in our <laughs> world. I mean, cardinal is action. So people are going to, you know, we are going to see some things get done. We are going to see some, some movement going on. Okay. Um, we have, we, uh, the, the really interesting thing about now, which is very unusual for the star to have, I mean, the, the five pointed star of Venus, there's five points and in astrology, there's four elements. And so typically there's, one element that dominates the star that there's a double of and so for the last um 40 years 40 some almost close to 40 years it's been fire we've had double fire with aries and leo on the star and then we had capricorn scorpio and gemini representing one of each of the other elements capricorn earth scorpio water and uh gemini air but now we're going to have two air signs on the star and two fire signs and only one earth sign and no water um the no water situation well in 2026 scorpio will come back for one last pass but until 2041 when pisces is born the pisces star is born there will absolutely be no water and I mean, we can literally look at this and compare it to the situation on Earth. Are we going to have a water crisis? People are talking about that already. They have been talking about that for 20 years or so. Is there going to be a water crisis? Um, most likely there will be. Yeah, good, clean water, good, clean, um, you know, I mean, the air in general, having double air on the star is also going to bring us um, the need to pay more attention to the environment and to the air, the quality of air that we breathe. Um, I mean, otherwise, we're going to all be going around as if we had COVID again or some other and, and viruses, airborne diseases um, are going to be possible again, um, especially from dirty air and dirty water. Um, you know, things like that can cause uh, infectious disease. And so are we all going to be in a world wearing masks again, everybody, um, perpetually, mm -hmm. forever? Um, or are we going to use this opportunity because um, necessity is the mother of invention? Um, to say, hey, we have a crisis now, we have to solve it. And I do believe, actually, I do believe in the technological geniuses and um, um, the scientific um, and engineering geniuses that we have on Earth right now to be able to come up with plans um, to save the planet. Although more recently, I said, and I, I said it kind of tongue in cheek, but I'm wondering if, if it's really true that I believe the the uh, uh, the survival of the Earth is going to depend on AI rather than hu the human mind, um, and that's a double-edged sword. Coming back to Libra, which is a double-edged sword, um, which is that okay, AI can solve a lot of problems for us. But on the other hand, AI can uh, put humans into a situation where we become um, sort of um, non-relevant. So we'll see. Well, what, we'll see what AI, happens. AI can can only do so much, right? In terms of you know, it's re to replace like the mundane jobs. You know that it gets too repetitive for humans. <laughs> Well, but I do see that um, because this Libra star point will be squaring Pluto, and when the zero degree Scorpio star point comes back, it'll still be squaring Pluto as well, but it will be Pluto in Aquarius. I think we will see really the uh, implementation of a lot of AI that we've not seen before in the middle of the 2020s. Yeah, that's what I see too. 
Yeah. Um, and that's because also... Um, because what is this retooling about? You yeah. know, it's it's about... It's, it's about some major things on the earth, this, this star sign change, because they happen so rarely, and because they do influence big changes in society, in culture, in politics, in economics, in everything, when it comes right down to it. Mm. Um, I've looked at every star point uh, sign change in history since about the 1700s, and I've noticed that, uh, yeah, that it, it may not happen the, the day of, but it's it's like a trend, you know, that's starting to emerge. And then it grows bigger and bigger as that star gains more influence and power. Um, and also, from the middle of the 2020s, we've got transit Uranus that will be eventually uh, kissing the Gemini star point as well. Yes, right. <laughs> so usually when I see Pluto and Uranus in sister signs, this time it will be air signs from the uh, mid middle of the 2020s onwards. Mm -hmm. I think there will be some very relevant AI that's, that's, uh, that's here to stay. Yeah. Yeah, for right. a long time to come. Mm -hmm. I've seen that before. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, exactly. So... Um, we're in for some interesting times, as they say. <laughs> well, I mean. <laughs> as if we're not in them already, but. <laughs> These two decades is going to be, yeah, quite a ride because we've got two Mars root star points that's been active for most of our lives, which are Aries and uh, Scorpio. They are both going to be phased out um and be replaced by Libra yeah. and Pisces where Venus function very well in yeah so. exactly mm -hmm. and that's a point I made in the book way back when this is why when I started writing the book and yeah. um working on it between 2004 and um 2011 when it was published um that I started feeling a, a surge of hopefulness and um, light fill me with the prospect of the star moving towards Venus and away from Mars influence, you know, because all our life it's been in the Martian zone and now we're moving slowly towards the Venus zone. It's like a pendulum that swings from Mars to Venus and back and forth through time slowly. Yeah. Yeah, more, more peace on Earth. I hope. <laughs> well, that's what, that's what we hope for, of course. Peace on Earth. Um, you know what we say every year at Christmas: peace on Earth, goodwill towards men, women, everybody. You know. <laughs> um, let's see. I have a couple of other slides. Oh, here's an interesting one. So, talk about sign shifts. Um, if we look at the birth of the Scorpio star, it was in the 1920s, 1926 to be per precise. And a hundred years before that, we had the Sagittarius star. And of course the primary mode of transportation and also the primary mode of, um, let's say the economy based um, industry were around horses, horses and carriages, carriage makers, horseshoers, um, people that bred horses for this particular thing. The horse was the thing. And I thought it was also the Wild West in America and the mystique of the cowboy and the, and the, and the Wild West and the, and the horse and, and the rodeo and all of that. Um, that came to a close in the 1920s. And basically the horse was replaced by the automobile fueled by petroleum which was the new Scorpio gold. And I thought, okay, what an interesting thing to think about as the Scorpio star phases out in the mid 2020s and it, and it reaches its last degree in 2026, exactly a hundred years after it began. Um, does this also mean that 
this new Scorpio gold, petroleum, the petroleum industry is going going to be going through a, a crisis and a changeover and, um, you know, a sort of a death. Uh, because Libra wants clean air, Libra wants beautiful air, Libra wants um, automobiles powered by something um, that is maybe better for the whole planet. And I also think that um, we really um, have already been investigating and exploring um, ideas about alternative energies. So I think this is another thing that could come forth. Um, what's, what's really interesting here is that um, the classic um, transit configuration in the sky, which is uh, Neptune and Pluto in sextile, they will no longer be sextiling each other in the early 2030s. That is when the Libra Venus star point fully phase in mm -hmm. in our world, by the way. Mm -hmm. So that um, Neptune and Pluto sextile in the sky, yeah. I think it will last to 2032, if I recall. Um, that's the um, using combination. Using degree or are you using? For uh, I think around like four degrees sextile. Four? Yeah, four. Yeah. So... Um, that Neptune sextile Pluto is the uh, configuration that really enabled the oil and gas exploration. Mm. And they will no longer be sextile, I think from 2032 onwards. So Interesting point. Okay. I hadn't thought yeah. about that Pluto <laughs> and that whole um, idea. And, of, that, mm -hmm. and that will be the first morning star. Cycle. You know, this is what I was seeing with the with the Venus star is it gives you much longer cycles in yeah. in astrology than Pluto does. Pluto in a sign, the maximum it can stay in a sign is what thirty five years, uh, and the and the minimum is about fourteen you know fourteen years or something. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's not long enough to really say what's been going on for a whole century right. and. The star points, which which really cover a whole century, from it, their inception um, to their um, transition phase, is basically a good way to track certain very strong points in our in in the historical dynamic. But that that Neptune uh, Pluto sextile that you're talking about is an interesting uh, thing to think about. Uh, because what it's been in effect for how long? I think since um, the second half of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's because been. I was extra. born with that, and I was born yeah. in the just at the beginning of the second half of the 20th century. And uh, it has lasted for quite a time. Yeah. And so, so what has incident. that really been yeah. saying to us, you know, what yeah. that Pluto-Neptune sextile, yeah. 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 Good for thought, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the other thing I say, see, with the disappearance of the Scorpio star, the Scorpio star has brought themes in the culture, uh, really violent themes, very destructive, very dark pervading the cultural landscape. Um, not only do mass shootings proliferate, you know, in our country, but in all, you know, all around the world now they're happening, um, including children who are not safe to even go to school anymore. And um, you can't walk out of a store into a, a, a mall, for instance, a shopping mall into a parking lot without being, um, gunned down in some cases. Um, and we've had all these dark themes in, in video games and in uh, uh, the movies and in television and in the whole um, art, you know, the whole cultural phenomena has been around these uh, dark themes. So I'm thinking when we leave Scorpio and go into Libra, 
it's going to bring in a wave of a new type of artistic expression. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that too. More classical, yeah. Yeah, classical <laughs> music, for instance. Um, so the other thing that I'm seeing come up for that is um, the fact that, okay, we've already talked about the Libra star now, and then four years from now, Scorpio, the last occurrence, and then 2030 um, is the first appearance of Libra as a morning star. Right now, it's an evening star. So with Libra ascending and Aries in both Scorpio descending, what does this mean for our collective? Uh, it means that we have a chance to come out of the me culture that's dominated the world and move more into a partnership dy dynamic or the we culture. Um, that factor is growing and actually is necessary for our evolution. And um, it's necessary for our survival as well. I don't think we can keep going on the competitive me against you um, type of uh, um, dynamic, dynamic yeah. Be, yeah. to keep us going, to keep us moving forward. And so as we look ahead, 2037 is the first, um, it's the last appearance of the Aries star. 2037, we can say goodbye to Aries. That'll be the last one. 2041, four years later, will be the first appearance, morning star of the Pisces. So, um, you know, that's an interesting shift that we're, that we're having. Two Mars signs retreating, two Venus signs um, rising. I'm just wondering, though, like with this ingress of the Libra star point in 2022, that this decade will be this era of um, being politically correct, which is Libra. As yeah. Well. Because Libra is the sign where Saturn is exalted. So is that that social fabric? Yeah. Like we have to agree with like as a collective and and I don't think it will get resolved um when the Aries Venus star point is still active. Yeah. <laughs> right, Sad to right. say, but <laughs> it'll take a while with that. Right, one. right. Yeah, yeah. No, but I think, you know, people are getting tired of war and fighting and this craziness is going on. Um, I, I just think that as we go through this shift, people are just going to become, be, get, they're going to be becoming more and more <clears throat> not wanting to support that, not wanting to engage in that. Um, and so I think I do see it as a positive time. Another thing that happened at the beginning of the last period of the Libra star was these two um, very well-known uh, women suffragettes who began this suffragette movement in the United States. Uh, Elizabeth Cady Stanton was a Libra morning star and Susan B. Anthony was a Libra evening star. And uh, Libra represents the scales of justice and equality. And they came together to fight for women's rights and to really uh, get women the right to vote. It didn't happen until later on, much later after they were gone, but they started a movement that didn't really die, that just kept moving forward um, to make that happen. Um, we're facing another level of, uh, you know, coming into the Libra star about women's rights. I mean, this time it's about women's reproductive rights, not just women's voting rights, but women's reproductive rights, which is a very big issue and a very personal kind of thing. Um, and that's on trial right now as well. So, uh, but again, Libra's going to support women having the right to choose. It's not going to be that their bodies are going to be legislated and controlled. I don't think they'll have it. Women have become 
very empowered. And one thing I will say about the Aries star point of the last hundred years, and even the Scorpio star point, is that women ruled by, in some ways, Venus, um, have become very outspoken, very dynamic, very empowered, and will not stand for certain things anymore. They will not stand for people telling them what to do, what they can and can't do, especially men telling women what they can and can't do. Do you also reckon that there'll be a definition of what femininity and what being a woman is? Why am I saying that is that uh, I've recently read on the news that um, you know, the Miss Universe pageant? Yeah, yeah. That franchise I formerly owned by... About it, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that French, that, 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 um, how do you call that? That franchise, I suppose you can call it that. Franchise. Uh, formerly, uh -huh. yeah, yes. formerly owned by Donald Trump. Um, it's now sold to a um, transgender female Thai businesswoman. Oh, okay. I think she's one of the richest um, transgender uh, person on earth, and she, pronounced, <laughs> um, bought the uh, the rights to the Miss Universe um, franchise. So I wonder if that will also impact the definition of what a woman is, and perhaps you know next time when we see Miss Universe, we may have like a like a mixture of representation. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, in that sense. Well, that's an interesting um, move. Um, first of all, to have the Miss, Miss Universe um, right. contest owned by a woman is a big step forward. Right. Yeah. And I think more women will become involved in um, whether they were born as a woman or whether they transited it as mm -hmm. into. Um, femininity, the you know, feminine gender in their lives. Um, it, it doesn't really matter that they declare that they are a woman, that I am a woman, okay? Um, I think they're going to be having more power in terms of buying and controlling companies and um, getting also more invested in investments um, and funded right. funding right. to interests that support them. And so they are going to become a power dynamic in the in the yeah. coming years. Yeah. Because Libra is also about representation, right? Mm -hmm. In a lot of ways. Yeah. And it's yeah. about um, pu public relations and also like advertising, all those things. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, um, the last Libra Venus star, what really went on there? Well, it's a large chunk of history to be able to kind of break it down into, you know, what was the main theme. But I think what we started to see in this time in the last Libra star point was equality in class structures. Um, the, 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 the hierarchical systems of class started to break down. Um, and not just class, but racial and gender. The class system in Britain was beginning to show signs of erosion with the onset of the Industrial Revolution. Um, these two women that I mentioned before, um, you know, worked tirelessly to pave the way for others to follow in terms of giving women the right to vote and to address other gender equality issues. Abraham Lincoln, one of the more um, uh, revered presidents of the United States was born in 1809 in the heart of the Libra VSP period. Although he himself was a Leo VSP, his, the, that was the helping hand on the pentagram on the five pointed star, you have these helping hands and foundational feet of the other four stars that are in effect at the time you were born. And he had 21 Libra on his helping hand, pretty closely conjunct his natal Mars in Libra. So Mars on his hand 
trining his natal sun and ascendant in Aquarius by initiating, initiating military action, which is Mars, to engender an outcome which would both abolish slavery in the United States. His efforts at the time were, <laughs> I still haven't changed this slide. That's supposed to say something else. What it was supposed to say, I don't know. <laughs> But anyway, it came out. Monumental. I think that's what you meant. Mad Jack. <laughs> My, maybe monumental. monumental. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, um, anyway, his star still shines because he's remembered as one of the greatest presidents of um, all time in the 250 year history of the United States. So that's another way that Mars can actually be productive and. You know, let's not let's not just be um, trashing Mars. You know, Mars has a place in the planetary sphere, as all the planets do, and it requires Mars requires courage. And what that means is, it just doesn't mean courage of I'm going to do something. Um, courage in the face of adversity or in the face of a lot of other people either questioning what you want to do or trying to block what you want to do or trying to say you're crazy or it's not going to work or whatever. You have the courage to push through all that and say, I'm going to do it because it's in me to do. And that's what he did. It wasn't popular at the time. I mean, there were both sides. There were a lot. There was a lot of debate on both sides whether this was going to be um, a good thing for the country or not a good thing for the country. But you know, it's like it takes a certain amount of strength and fortitude and character, will, uh, to to push your agenda in the face of so much opposition. So these are just other examples of, uh, we don't have to get into that now, because I know, Donnie, you have a lot of current examples, um, <laughs> and we want to get to them before we yes. run out of time. So, um, um, so for the purpose of um, this little presentation on the Libra Venus star point, uh, what I'm showing here is the five active star points. Um, that's in the sky right now that's impacting us on Earth. Mm -hmm. And the head of the... That's a beautiful star. diagram, Donnie. <laughs> so the head of the Venus star will be what we are having now at 29 mm -hmm. degrees, 26 minutes of Libra. But right, then right. what's on the left of the star will be what's come before uh, now which is the Capricorn star point, which we've had for the bulk of 2022. And then one further back will be the Aries um, Venus star point that was active um, in March of 2021, all the way to January of 2022, right before the Sun and Venus actually embraced or kissed at 18 degrees, 46 minutes of Capricorn. Mm -hmm. um, on the right of the Venus star will be what is already manifesting itself um, already, but we probably um, have not felt the full impact of it because we are not currently running the, um, the star point itself, as in it has not formed in the sky. So the one that's coming up will be the Leo star point at 20 degrees, 28 minutes of Leo. And this one will be another interesting one, which we'll discuss probably next year with Ariel. Because <laughs> this star point will be squaring Uranus close to exact. <laughs> and then the, um, the one after the Leo star point will be the, um, the foot of the star. So how you would see this will be, uh, for the Libra star point is the head of the star. And then the, um, the Capricorn and the Leo star points are the arms, and the Aries and the Gemini star point are the feet mm -hmm. of the Venus star. So this is what we have. And 
Now let's go on to the application part in which I'm interested in which I'm interested in exploring. <laughs> um, so since he has just been appointed as Prime Minister of the UK, and we've been talking about the uh, the UK just now. Uh, let us look at Rishi Sunak's chart. Let me just look for that. So he's born 12th of May 1980. So he's the youngest uh, PM and also person of color uh, to be the PM of the UK. And he's also the richest, by the way. <laughs> if I recall, um, it's reported that he, he actually married... Um, a tech billionaire's daughter and their combined net worth is more than king charles's twice over <laughs> okay so so that is what we are looking are we at. seeing a little bit of shifting from out of the scorpio star now <laughs> to Libra and a, yeah. a power balance that comes <laughs> forth from another side <laughs> yes and uh with this chart that's rectified by the way um, I've plotted the five active transit Venus star points to his chart to just have a look what, at what's what is his on. natal Venus star point. I think his natal uh, Venus star point is um, oh, Gemma? I think he's um, he's or born as Virgo. a Virgo, but then uh, with progression, he will turn into a Gemini. Gemini, yeah, I thought yeah. maybe he was very mercurial. Um, yeah. On this star, yeah, that's true. Nineteen, the star he was born in May of nineteen eighty. Yeah. Um, the star shifted in June of nineteen eighty, but so before that, his prenatal star is two Virgo evening star, and his progressed going into his life, um, the rest of his life, uh, twenty four Gemini morning star. Mm. So his his. Um... I would call NATO Venus Look star point. That. Mars Look is exactly bang Virgo. on top. Yeah. Jupiter, Mars. Wow. And he's also got other planets at zero degrees, which include Venus and also the moon as well. Very potent. And Venus and the moon are in mutual reception. <laughs> yeah. In each other sign. And this links up with that Mars and Jupiter in this configuration or chart aspect pattern, which is called the minor grand trine, which is a trine with two sextiles, all mm -hmm. aiming at that Venus in the seventh house of marriage. And Venus rules that very potent angular um, Pluto close to the midhaven. So he's known for he's known for having a very rich spouse. <laughs> in other words. And, and this is uh, um, a confirmed birth time? This birth time is rectified, but I have tested it to um, um, to show that it holds up and it has uh, held up pretty well. Pretty okay. Okay. So um, the current um, 29 degrees, 26 minutes Libra start point in transit is falling into his 10th house, so very prominent. 10th house is really what you're famous for, or infamous for, or notorious for, depending <laughs> what you're up to. And um, what's coming up next is very uh, telling. Because right after this uh, Libra star point, we do have a 20 degrees, 28 minutes Leo star point that is exactly squaring his Sun and Mercury in Taurus and also squaring that Uranus. This is the one that really caught my eye. So what I'm thinking is that perhaps his time as the role of PM may not be as long as well. Probably longer than Liz Truss. <laughs> 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 Probably longer than 44 days. I think that's yeah, how long she's there I'm for. sure yeah. we can count on that. But... <laughs> um, but that upcoming Leo star point, 
that will be squaring his Sun, Uranus, and Mercury opposition. Um, I think there will be this kind of... Because Uranus actually reminds me of referendum, particularly in the 11th house, okay. um, that perhaps that, that there might be a general election that might be pushed forward. That could be one of the reasons why that uh, he may not be there for as long as he would like. Um, and not to forget that, um, there will be an annular or annular solar eclipse um, in the middle of October next year that will be pretty closely eclipsing his uh, midhaven as well and Pluto as well. So solar eclipse around this point in his chart can also be that um, um, new beginnings for better or for worse pertaining to his um, um, political aspirations, which is that Pluto MC combination. Um, and also I've plotted in some Arabic parts or lots. And he does have uh, one very interesting one, which is P3. Where's P3 over here? Which is part of profession. And there will be Another solar eclipse happening in late April of next year, 2023 at 29 degrees of Aries, activating that 29 degrees Libra star point and also squaring his um, natal uh, part of profession. So there's something going on that doesn't hold up professionally. <laughs> if there is, I would say that it's a conflict in interest between his... Yes. Um, money uh his family money and what they're invested into and the actual um policies of the uk government and uh just because of all that taurus scorpio and as you mentioned uranus um not only at 23 scorpio but transiting uranus is going to come you know dancing around that whole configuration as well yeah, that uh, transit Uranus next year will be hovering over his um, Sun-Mercury conjunction as well. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of... So don't forget, anybody with Pluto close to the midheaven like he has is not going to have a life without controversy. Right. And, and... scandal. And under cover behind the scenes kind of dealings and all of that. So we can sort of expect that. And because Pluto in his chart very much is talking about the spouse, because Pluto is ruled by Venus in the seventh house of marriage partners, um, I think it's, it's already been known that um, um, the wife has been, uh, or have, has been evading taxes. <laughs> So very much that Pluto, you know, Pluto is about taxes as well. Yeah. So yeah, controversy, all of those things. <laughs> mm -hmm. So for the detailed um, analysis, I suppose the audience can read whatever I've written here, but I just want to point out that um, usually what we plot are the five active transit star points in the sky and then see what, what's the unfolding story. It's like an evolutionary spiral, which is the Venus star. Yeah. So let us go to the other um, key person of interest, which is Elon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because, a few days, <laughs> because a few days after this uh, Libra star point uh, came into effect, um, well, the Twitter deal did go through and um, he's planning to unban controver controversial figures that were previously banned from Twitter. And of course, he also like changed um, a lot of um, the upper management personnel. I think he mm -hmm. fired the top four people in, uh, yeah, in Twitter. The day he actually moved... Um, his stuff, including a sink. <laughs> I 
I don't know what is it for, but <laughs> into his a, uh, sink. Okay. a sink. Literally, he's carrying a sink. So <laughs> I don't know if it's some ominous message or something, or he's trying to tell us something. But you know, he's always uh, right. That's gotta mean <laughs> something, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And well, uh, this... know, I was impressed with how much his chart um, kind of fits in with the U.S. natal chart because mm. he's got um, his son's at five cancer, which is on the Venus Jupiter conjunction of the United States. That's in early cancer, both those points. And his Mercury's at 13 cancer, which is the United States sun. So he's got a uh, you know, and it's in his second house. Of course, um, you have a birth time here for him. I have. Um, this is also rectified, but I've rectified. also tested this okay. chart. It holds up okay. pretty well. Yeah. But still, it's a sign of wealth, and uh, uh, you know, having done quite well in the United States, because obviously he's another one who came to the U.S. as an immigrant, mm. um, and uh, born in South Africa, and I think he spent some time in Canada as a while for a while as well before right. coming to the U.S., but he's done very well there. Um, he's also got, I had done an article on him earlier this year for the Venus Star Point newsletter, yeah. and I had when he was first announcing plans to buy Twitter, and then the deal was put on hold, but... <clears throat> Transiting Uranus at the time was at 17 Taurus, and his Venus mm. star point, I don't know if you have it in here, but his, no, I don't see it, but his Venus star point is actually at 17 Scorpio, uh, right. 1971, um, he was born um, 17 and a half Scorpio is his star point. Pretty much bang on then, yeah. Right where Uranus is still hasn't finished. And so uh, I wasn't surprised that the deal was put on hold for a little while because with Uranus, things always, you know, there's always sudden yeah. changes and yeah. distractions and, you know, whatever. But now he's here. And of course, Uranus is still moving through that um, that area of the Zodiac. And I think it's going to be going across the star point until April of next year, as I recall. So it's not over. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the current Libra Venus star point by, by transit is uh, in his sixth house. So yeah, mm -hmm. new work environment. I don't know why the sink still comes in, but it's okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I mean, you have to admire the beauty of the um, of the aspect of the timing of the aspect because <laughs> as we speak, <laughs> Uranus is at seventeen and a half Taurus, <laughs> and his star point is seventeen right. and a half Scorpio. So right. you know, there you get a living example of how it's working for him. Oh, yeah. So this is very much happening in terms of timeline perfect because the U.S. midterm elections are just around the corner. Mm -hmm. I think it's on the day of the uh, total lunar eclipse. <laughs> yes, right. At 16 and, Taurus. Yeah, right. the 16 Taurus. <laughs> uh-huh, right. Oh, so that's why this chart this rectified chart, it holds up pretty well in yeah. terms of that. And not to mention that if I were to input the vertex, his vertex uh, will be, you know, will be around 19 degrees of Capricorn. That's where the last star point was, less mm -hmm. than a degree, give or take, but it's still very much um, um, significant. Yeah. And what's coming up will be um, the Leo star point on his natal fourth house cusp. Mm -hmm. So some stuff that's coming up pertaining to property or, you know, well, or maybe expand his family. <laughs> yeah. I think he's now got like, what, 10, 10 kids via uh, artificial insemination. So <laughs> more to come. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And um, then the Gemini, Venus star point, is falling into his first house. So hence Twitter, you know, Bert, Twitter, Mercury, Gemini, <laughs> all those yeah. things are coming in. Mm -hmm. okay. So if you plot the five star points, it actually paints a story. And it's all happening mm -hmm. um, when, this, when the active star point, the hit of the star, is falling into his sixth house. Yeah. Of work, which is one of the uh, earth houses or material houses. Mm -hmm. And hmm, I think we've got time for one more. I've got clusters of charts. <laughs> well, who do you want to talk about? Um, you know, since we since we're talking about the UK just now, why not we look at someone um someone of interest? <laughs> Harry. Of course. Uh the Harkles. Um why do the I Harkles. want to Well, Harry and Mark. Is that what they're called? The Harkles. Yeah, or the former Duke and Duchess of Montecito, California. Oh, <laughs> I think they've moved out of Montecito, California. So they have, <laughs> where are they now? Hope Ranch. Oh, I don't know where where's that, but you know, I've I've thought it's just too much to keep up. Yeah. So, um, why do I want to oh, talk I about? I hope he has horses on the ranch because look at he's got three planets in Sagittarius. And, yeah, uh, and he does play um, on the horse like that polo thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So so he does. Yeah, that. So maybe they'll be into breeding um, you know, really fine thoroughbred horses or something. <laughs> <laughs> um the important thing here is that um I think his book, Tell All Book, uh will be dropping in January. I think right. the title is called Spare. <laughs> yes. Because, yeah. Um, and then there's the Netflix um, docu-series <laughs> that's coming out as well. I don't know if either one of this will materialize, but what's really interesting is that look at where 29 degrees, 26 minutes of Libra is falling into his natal chart, the ninth house of mass media. So mm -hmm. Netflix docu-series, tell-all, book, publisher, all those things. And I think the publishers are actually... Um, because I think he's got a massive cash advance uh, in order to complete this, like, was it three-part book deal? So I wonder if that will even go to completion in that sense. Hmm. Um, well, this current Venus star point is conjunct is Pluto. Yes. In Scorpio. Yeah. A very strong Pluto. So, but having said that, <laughs> Um, Pluto can it also, also. It also has, um, you know, a star point conjunct one's natal Pluto has to do with a lot of separation. Yes. And, and new life, um, you know, letting go of the old, coming into the new. So there's a really a big split in terms of his, you know, he's been feeling this even leading up to the Libra star point for a while now. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that uh, he is uh, uh, got that Pluto there and all the things he said and all the uh, things that Megan has said mm -hmm. to distance himself from his family. And yet, you know, I think for Harry, it's a very um, conflicted way state of being because he is capricorn rising and he does have a right. certain tie and um support to you know the traditions of his family and uh his venus is in libra so yeah. he wants to be uh he he wants to keep peace <laughs> Eight house is also the place where we feel kind of abandoned as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, so with that Sun, Mercury, and Venus there, and part of Fortune. Yeah, it's it's a it's quite a lot. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, that and yeah. hence his book titled Spare because he feels like he's like the spare one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and not to forget that um, he's a Capricorn rising and the previous Venus star point is also in Capricorn. So Capricorn also rules um, the action of cancelling. It's almost like he's being casted out and being cancelled by the royal family as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually thinking that since this current Libra star point is in his ninth house, if the book... And the Netflix docu series actually comes out. I think you, you know, he'll be toast. Yeah, that's what I you see. You don't see him being. You don't see the Netflix uh, series and the book being successful for him. I don't. <laughs> Not with the star points and the houses in which they fall in, and of course the aspects as well. After some mm-hmm. analysis, but what's really telling will be the one coming up. Because the Leo star point at 20 degrees, 28 minutes is a morning star because Venus will be retrograde next year in the sign of Leo. Right. Um, it's landing pretty close to, to his vertex in the seventh house, which is referring to Megan, which is a Leo, by the way, conjunct the North Node. <laughs> yeah, she is a Leo. Yeah. yeah. And if I, if I were to look at the aspects of this Leo star point is pretty tightly square his seventh house ruler, which is the moon in Taurus, in the fourth house. Mm-hmm. This is telling me that trouble is in paradise, be it Montecito, California, or somewhere else, <laughs> um, pertaining to the marriage, because it does square the seventh house ruler. Uh, and by the way, Megan is a cancer rising. So it's even more so referring to her. Mm-hmm. And there's some things pertaining to going... Because fourth house moon, right? Also tells me that um, he might be returning to the UK. Homeland, fourth house. That's where he feels more emotionally moon grounded, Taurus, and stable as well. And Uranus is um, approaching the moon as well. So there's this kind of... People have been speculating, but I do see it for myself that Harry doesn't look well, like that mental health issues that might be coming up for him as well. Mm -hmm. Um, But on the funnier side, I don't know if whether Harry will pull like uh, Katie Holmes. (laughs) (laughs) By the way, do you know how Katie Holmes actually escaped from... uh, um, Tom Cruise. <laughs> no, no, tell us. So please. literal. So li- literally, it's like that's, that. Tom Cruise don't see it coming, <laughs> and suddenly, like Katie Holmes just packed up and just like went off, you mm-hmm. know, with the daughter and just like you know, call it a day. Get and, me out of here, please. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's that kind of um, energy that I got from the uh, Leo Star Point aspects, but. This Libra star point in the ninth house. Ninth house is also holy matrimony. You think he's going to pack up and take the kids with him? <laughs> I think he's going to pull a Katie Holmes. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's something. we'll be on the watch. We'll be on the lookout for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and not to forget that um, that 29 degree uh, Aries hybrid um, solar eclipse that will be coming up in late April of 2023. Mm-hmm. It will be opposing, although it's out of sign, it will still be opposing um, his Pluto. Yeah. And, and reactivating that um, uh, that Libra, 29 degree transit Venus star point. And also in the month of May as well, you've got transit Mars that will be falling into his seventh house, eventually mm-hmm. hitting that 29 degree Cancer um point which will activate that libra uh star point again so april to may it seems to be this kind of culmination of something (laughs) yeah so i do see that so prediction will be like april to may there will be some things brewing (laughs) yeah well you know 
what I see prominent mainly is his Pluto at zero Scorpio. And for the whole decade of the 20s, that star point is going to be hovering over that Pluto. Yeah. Um, uh, within one degree right now from Libra, but exactly on it in 2026. And then by 2030, it's still only two degrees away. So yeah. uh, in Libra. So I think uh, as the decade goes through its transition, I think so will Harry go through his, you know, and it, it Pluto transits are, you know, this is to Pluto rather than from Pluto. But um, it actually is from Pluto, too, because Pluto in early Aquarius is going to be, and late Capricorn is hovering over that cusp, too, of squaring his own Pluto. Yeah, so midlife crisis. <laughs> it's a time for him to mine some very deep, deep feelings. And yeah. um, in the process of it, how much is going to be private, how much is going to be public, how much is, is old secrets, old feelings of um traumas um, right pluto yeah old traumas and old feelings of um even competition uh in the mm -hmm. family between he and his brother because if he called his book spare it means that he's you know kind of feeling a little bit left out of the mm -hmm. whole thing anyway yeah uh but yeah i think pluto he's having his plutonian catharsis period now and um i'm sure there's a lot more behind the scenes that's going on with him that we have no clue of mm -hmm. and he's born with he's born with a natal venus star point being gemini hence the sibling rivalry yeah. or the sibling bitterness i think that's a better way to put it yeah and so now well, let's it can be a sibling cooperation, but Gemini definitely is a sibling constellation. So um, there's a little bit of both. There's often that love hate relationship uh, it, with the sibling um, in the Gemini star point um, uh, feelings of, you know, the dramas that they go through in life. Yeah. Right. And so now let's move on to. I suppose this is just like, you know, um, predictions, soon to be ex-wife. <laughs> and if I look at the five star points, particularly looking at the 29 degree, 26 minutes, um, Libra star point, it's pretty close to conjunct her Juno. Yeah, that which, will be exact in 2030. Yeah. But then um, it's already by sign is only like what two degrees away or less than two yeah, degrees away it's actually. Two degrees away. Yeah. yeah. And the star point after that at twenty degrees, um, um, twenty eight minutes of Leo, it's pretty tightly square. Um, her Chiron, which will be transited by Uranus, on the way as well next year so that's this kind of hmm, how do i put it it's like um from from her chart i do see a lot of money money issues with harry that's what i do see because you know taurus is a money money sign and chiron and with transit uranus over it yeah it is not looking that great and um It is also um, the Leo star point is sextiling her Pluto. So there's a lot of like fourth house activation there. Like fourth house is really about endings and beginnings and in the sign of Libra, marriage. Now I've come to some conclu conclusions pertaining to that, at least on a macro level. And... Um, if we talk about the... Um, what about Pluto transiting her south node in the seventh? That's got to be something pretty dramatic coming up yeah. immediately. That as well. Yeah. <laughs> and that... Um, what else is coming up for her? Let me see. Um, eclipses coming up over, the, over the, um, the time frame of April to May of 2023 is there something at 29 degrees of a cardinal 
not quite <laughs> close. Pluto. How about Pluto? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah and the ascendant and descendant axis yeah yeah it's it's, it's around the late degrees of a cardinal well, sign yeah transiting pluto is what i meant yeah yeah and the oh 29 degree um aries hybrid solar eclipse in april 2023 mm -hmm. it will be opposing her juno <laughs> yeah <sighs> it seems yeah. like it's non-stop isn't it <laughs> like <laughs> And she is at, oh, she's born an Aries Venus star point, by the way. Yeah. She is an Aries star point. Yeah. And it's so in her I, I had a comment on this several years ago. <clears throat> um, Princess Diana had an mm. Aries star point. Yeah. And both Kate, William's wife, yeah. and Megan, Harry's wife, have Aries star points. And I had put out the notion some time back that they were both competing in one way or another um, to be uh like diana but th there was going to be some competition um, i don't think kate is an aries venus star point because she's born in january that year january of what year 1981 so the aries venus star point didn't face in until april so she's the one before that so uh i think it's um Gemini. Gemini, right, right. Yeah, June of 1980 is Gemini. Right. April of 81 is Aries. Yeah. Yeah, okay. so Kate is a Gemini-born uh, Venus star point individual. But then okay. Aries is one of the uh, one of the arms, definitely. So it's definitely in it, in her Venus star. Mm -hmm. And um, what is the... Lunar eclipse after that, um, on the fifth of May, twenty twenty three. I think it's uh, oh, in the mid, in the um, in the earlier the degrees of Scorpio. May twenty twenty three is a full moon lunar eclipse at fourteen, almost fifteen Scorpio. So it'll be squaring her sun. <laughs> And son can represent husband in Leo royalty. So there you go. Like, I do see like eclipses, Venus star point, so on and so forth. All those things converging together to kind of paint like the marriage may or may not survive till King Charles's coronation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In early May. And by the way, uh, I did in one of my posts say that uh, King Charles may not even make it to um, his own official coronation in uh, in May of 2023. So, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. And what made you say that? Um, by looking at his chart and using the same methodology, I don't see it. Okay. Well, watch yeah, for that one it. too. So there's a lot of things going on in the UK pertaining to... Yeah. Um... Well, listen, <laughs> there are a lot of things going on in the UK. Right. <laughs> I mean, we... <laughs> You know, not only did Elizabeth pass, the reigning monarch for, what, over 50 right. years, um, right. but also, um, and, and a new monarch coming in, yeah. for how long, we don't know. Right. And um, there were many predictions by UK astrologers decades ago that Charles would never make it to the throne or that he would have a short-lived reign. Mm. So I don't know. There's something about that that might be still in the air. And then we've had three prime ministers of the UK within the last couple of months. So the UK is definitely going through a crisis of leadership in terms of who is our, you know, who who is it? You know, who are we looking to? I even went further <laughs> down. You know, I'm a researcher of sorts. And yeah. when the... I see star point actually phases in 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 the next like what 19 20 years i would go on the camera to say that we may not even have a british monarch by then Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and this is via some kind of research that i've that i've been doing so mm -hmm. so there mm -hmm. you go like from two mars root star points become two other star points 
in which Venus function very well in, I don't see like the winner doesn't take it all. That's mm -hmm. what Mars is, mm -hmm. you know, implying to me. Yeah. Well, you know, this last nine months before the Libra star came in was the Capricorn star. It started yeah. in January <laughs> and we lost a lot of leaders, political leaders in all over the world in 2022 in terms of the shifting political sands of political um, um, leadership and yeah. influence. And Capricorn is a lot about politics and, you know, law, leadership, uh, the the administration or the running of companies. And so our, our, our countries, I should say countries, which are nowadays more modern, like companies in a way, you know, they're looking for um, their growth in- New direction, yeah. GPD. <laughs> We've also lost a lot of legends as well, Capricorn. Yeah. So yeah. Angela Lansbury, Murder, She Wrote. Oh, yeah. That's an interesting one. Maybe uh, I'll get a chance to discuss her on, on a future uh, broadcast. Um, I think we also lost Coolio. You know the song Gangster's Paradise <laughs> way back when with yeah. Michelle Pfeiffer. Okay, like probably that's a music icon. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we've lost like quite a number of icons as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so a lot of changes in this two decades. Any parting words, Ariel, for the audience? Or do you want to save it for the next episode? <laughs> for our discussion. Next, yeah, <laughs> tune, in, tune in next time around. Um, actually, what I do want to say is that Donnie is a certified practitioner of the Venus Starpoint um, teachings and has done very well with it. And I encourage any astrologers who are who are really interested in studying this and working with the star um, to check out the course that's being offered. Go go to my website, um, sophiavenus.com. You'll find dozens of instructional videos on there, past videos that we've done about learning about the star, and um, you can sign up for the course if you want and. Um, optionally sign up for the exam later on. Um, but we'd love to have you as part of the ever-growing global family of Venus Starpoint practitioners. And I appreciate all the research and work you've done, Donnie, on this. It's, it's really uh, kind of amazing. Well, I'm just adding to the satellites, right? I call us satellites, you know, Venus Starpoint yes, practitioners. And Venus Starpoint satellites <laughs> around the globe. And yeah. we are almost on every continent right now. Wow. I think the only one that I'm not sure, uh, we do not have one in South America. So um, South America, where are you? <laughs> Calling. <laughs> <laughs> well, till the next star point in Leo then, because I can't wait for that uh, Venus retrograde in Leo. I'm pretty excited. Yeah. Oh, you are excited. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. I got planets in Leo. <laughs> okay. Well, go then. Go, Donnie. Go. <laughs> go, Donnie. Go, Donnie. Go, Donnie. Go. All right. So um, that's okay. all for now. I well, suppose. so that's it for today. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for having me again. Always welcome, really. Yeah. <laughs> so goodbye for now. Bye.